In this video, we'll be going over logistic regression. Logistic regression, unlike how the name sounds, is actually a classification algorithm. This particular notebook will start by covering what logistic regression is, how it works, and then we'll dive into how to use it in Python. As usual, the first step is to import the libraries that we're going to use. The data is a breast cancer Wisconsin data set, which I converted to a CSV file for your convenience. The goal of this prediction is to successfully classify cancer as malignant or benign. This code inputs a data set into a pandas data frame. We have a bunch of features and we have a diagnosis column where a one in a particular row represents cancer as malignant, a zero represents it as benign. In this notebook, we'll use worst concave points as a feature to predict diagnosis. And you can see it in this graph below. This section of the notebook is just showing trying to use linear regression to classify and see where it falls short. And in the graph below, a one is malignant and a zero is benign. This part of the code gives us a features matrix and a target vector. We're then making a linear regression instance. We're gonna train our model. We're gonna learn the relationship between our X and our Y. The next step is to make predictions for our x values. What this graph is showing is a graph of worst concave points on the x-axis and on the y-axis we have diagnosis. Whether the cancer is malignant and that'd be a 1 or benign as a 0. If we were to use linear regression to predict, in other words to classify something being malignant or benign, we generally have to have a cutoff value or a threshold where we predict malignant versus benign. Around 0.15, there's a prediction value of 0.5. And if something is greater than or equal to 0.5, we predict a class of one, in other words, malignant. If it's less than or equal to 0.5, we predict benign. One of the problems though, is if the value for worst concave points is around zero, what does it mean when our model predicts negative 0.25 for a class instead of a one or a zero? This may seem a bit odd, so maybe we should try to constrain our predictions between zero and one. This is where logistic regression is useful. Logistic regression bounds output to zero and one, and this will make logistic regression output the probabilities of a specific class. And these probabilities can be converted into class predictions. What you see below is a sigmoid function. And all you have to take from this is that it's bounded between zero and one. This next section shows predictions for a logistic regression model. So as usual, you have your features matrix and your target vector. You make an instance of a model. You fit your model on your data and you learn the relationship between your features matrix and your target vector. This next part of the code is mostly for demonstrational purposes. This first line, we're creating a data frame of our worst concave points and our diagnosis as two columns. From there, we're making our prediction probabilities. These are between zero and one. We're next making our prediction probabilities as a column. And we're making that column named logistic underscore preds. This line of code, it's probably better to show you what it does rather than explain it.
And what you saw before, when it was kind of a mess, is that because our predictions weren't sorted, our predictions may have gone from 0.1 to 0.9 to 0.2 and just all over the place. This is because this particular plot is a line plot. So it's just connecting the dots. And when we sort it, it's connecting the dots, but since it's sorted, the dots are a lot closer together. So this red line are just our predictions. So one reason why you'd use logistic regression versus other algorithms is if you understand how it works, you're better able to understand how the model makes predictions. The model training and prediction is relatively fast for an algorithm. Additionally, one of the major benefits of this algorithm versus others is that you don't have to tune it much. Another major benefit is that it performs well with a small number of observations. What this means is that some algorithms require a lot of data to make good predictions. Logistic regression, while it may not be the most competitive as far as predictive power with the best supervised learning algorithms, it doesn't require much data, relatively speaking. It also outputs predicted probabilities. And we'll see why this is important throughout this particular video. As far as disadvantages, a major disadvantage is it assumes there's a linear relationship between your features and the log odds of the response. It's not always the case. And as mentioned, the performance is usually not competitive with the best machine learning methods. As far as how to evaluate how well your logistic regression classification algorithm does, there's a couple of different evaluation metrics you could use. Accuracy is one metric, but it really doesn't give much insight into what went wrong. And we previously looked into a confusion matrix. Let's look at this in more detail before getting into new topics. This code creates a NumPy array in the form of a confusion matrix. This code takes that confusion matrix and makes it into a more understandable visualization. What this confusion matrix shows is where you predicted accurately and in what cases, and where you predicted inaccurately and in what cases. So when we predicted one, in other words, malignant, when the actual value was one, this happened 184 times. When we predicted benign, and it was actually malignant, this happened 28 times, and so on and so forth. Let me show you the same information on a more detailed confusion matrix. Don't worry about what this code is doing. I'm just showing this for demonstrational purposes. When you predict something is true, and it's actually true, this is called a true positive. When you predict something is false, and it's actually true, this is called a false negative. When you predict something is false, and it's actually false, this is called a true negative. When you predict something is true, and it's actually false, this is called a false positive. These terms are important to understand, as oftentimes you're trying to optimize your model, let's say for true positives, some models you're trying to optimize the amount of true negatives, and so on and so forth. Here are the proper definitions of true negative, false positive, false negative, and true positive. Other common terms to evaluate the performance of a model are sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity is the amount of true positives over the summation of the number of true positives plus the false negatives. Specificity is the number of true negatives over the summation of true negatives and false positives. This code is calculating the specificity and sensitivity for the model. Sensitivity is oftentimes referred to as true positive rate. 
And this just tells us, of all the cases in the data, how many did we accurately predict? So this is the model's ability to detect cases. Specificity is also sometimes referred to as true negative rate. And this tells us how many of the non-cases in the data did we accurately predict? You may also hear the terms type one and type two error rate. And these are very similar to type one and type two error rates in statistical tests. If you wanna check your understanding, I encourage you to think about an example where we care about sensitivity, in other words, true positive rate, but not as much about specificity, in other words, true negative rate. One example might be if you're diagnosing cancer, you might prefer to have false positives, in other words, predicted cancer when there is no cancer. And this can be later corrected with a more specific test. As far as an example where you care about specificity, true negative rate, but not as much about sensitivity, might be if you're doing spam detection, you might want to be more precise. In other words, anything that we remove from an inbox must be spam, which may mean accepting fewer true positives. By default, one of the underlying assumptions of logistic regression is predicting a positive class when the probability of the class is greater than or equal to 0.5, and a negative class if it's not. What if we decide to use 0.2 as a threshold for picking a positive class? This would mean we predict more positive classes, but fewer true negatives. And what I'm getting into is trading off true positives and true negatives. One thing you often see is something called an ROC curve. And an ROC curve is a common way to compare the true positive rate to the false positive rate at each threshold for classification. And it's useful to help choose a threshold that appropriately balances sensitivity and specificity. The code below generates an ROC curve. And rather than go through this graph, I wanna show you an interactive visualization. This interactive visualization goes over the same metrics that we just went over of sensitivity and specificity, as well as ROC curves on the same data set that we used. With the same challenge of classifying tumors as benign or malignant, the Wisconsin Breast Cancer Dataset had 29 different features for each tumor. For simplicity's sake, in this example, as well as in the notebook, we used one feature. We previously used logistic regression to model the probability of malignant. And if you want to convert the probabilities to binary outcomes, you need to pick a threshold. In our previous example, we had a threshold of 0.5. With logistic regression, you can change the threshold. What this means is that when you change a threshold, you change other metrics. You can change your accuracy this way. You can change your sensitivity, your specificity, etc. So if you want to optimize sensitivity, you can do so If you want to optimize specificity, you can do so. With models, oftentimes you want to find a balance between sensitivity and specificity. One way people do this is that oftentimes they use an ROC curve. In this next notebook, it's a logistic regression, in other words, classification task with a Titanic dataset. The goal 
is it predicts survival based on passenger characteristics. And in the data set, one is survived and zero is not. As this is a logistic regression exercise, please use a logistic regression model to accomplish this goal. And as a reminder, logistic regression is a classification algorithm. Another thing to emphasize is that if you worked with scikit-learn before, in other words, made a decision tree model, it's relatively easy to switch to another model using scikit-learn. So I encourage you to work on this exercise now. Let's now go over the solution. So as usual, we have the loader data set and we're loading it into a pandas data frame. The next step is to arrange our data into a features matrix and target vector. We're modifying our features matrix to have acceptable values to be inputted into a machine learning algorithm. So we're changing the male and the female in the sex column to zero and one respectively. You could have also made it a female being a zero and a male being a one. The model still will work. The next step is to remove or impute values for the age column. We can now create our features matrix and our target vector. The next step is to split our data into training and testing sets. Logistic regression is like a lot of algorithms where it requires data and features in particular to look more or less like standard normally distributed data. And you can standardize features by removing the mean and scaling to unit variance. You can do this by using standard scalar. From here, we can fit logistic regression. We import the model that we want to use. We make an instance of the model. We train the model on the data, storing the information learned from the data. We can now make predictions on new data. This is the accuracy of our model. One important thing to note is that oftentimes you can compare your accuracy to the null accuracy. And the null accuracy is if you predict the most common class. In our case, it's if you predict everyone didn't survive. So our accuracy, at least in this iteration of the model, is 81.56%, and the null accuracy is 57, so the model has some predictive power. From here, we can make a confusion matrix. I should note that in these exercises, I'm giving you one potential solution. There are many different solutions that you could have come up with. 